Good evening, good evening, good evening. I've been excited and delighted ever since I was invited to midweek service. Here we are again. God have afforded us this precious preaching privilege. My name is Ezekiel Vaughn. I'm the midweek service conductor at Shiloh Baptist Church in Plano, Texas, where our senior pastor is Isaiah Joshua. Here we are again virtually uh, having midweek service due to COVID-19, and we thank God for the experience to come into your homes and into the uh, communities via Facebook, via YouTube. And again, before I preach, I want to thank my son and his wife for helping me walk through this experience. All right, midweek service, I would open up with something like this. We come this Fall by faith, leaning on the Lord. Every day I'm trusting, trusting in his holy word. I'm a witness, he's never failed me yet. That's why we're singing, oh, 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 oh. can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Listen, don't be discouraged when trouble is in your life. He will bear your burdens and move all misery. And strife. That's why we're saying in heaven, we've come this far by faith. Every day of my life, leaning on the Lord. Every day I'm trusting, trusting in His holy word. I'm a witness that He never, He's never failed me yet. That is why we're singing, oh, 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 oh. can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Our scripture reading this evening is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 16. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. You will find these words recorded. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your lines girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, look at verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked or wicked one. The Living Translation reads this way on verse 16. Let your faith be like a shield, and ye will be able to stop all the fiery darts of the wicked. So this evening, I want to pick back up. I exited off last week in verse 16. I want to exit back on to verse 16 one more time. In part two, the shield of faith, I want to talk about growing one faith. I'm still dealing with the shield of faith, but I want to talk about growing our faith. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you now again for this preaching privilege. We cannot preach unless your Holy Spirit overcome us. We pray now that you guide my mind that I think right, guide my tongue that I speak right. Then we pray for the hearers that you give them ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Before I preach, I want to ask special prayer for Sheila Gillette in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, in the hospital. We certainly want to be in prayer for her and all those that are going through sickness, layoff, and all of those things that will come up on us. 
We are in the series, Putting on the Whole Armor of God. And I told you at the beginning of the series, the Apostle Paul finds himself in a lockdown, kind of like we are in 2020. He's locked down, but he has a Roman soldier attached to him. And because this Roman soldier is attached to him, Paul makes a spiritual analysis of a physical condition that if you are going to be in God's army, then you have to put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And so my first message, I spent my time telling you that our enemy is Satan. Yeah, we think we wrestle against, we think that we wrestle against people, but the text says our enemy is Satan and we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It even tells us in this spiritual warfare that the battle belongs to the Lord. But the devil, I told you, is a dirty fighter. And his job is to try to legalize God's word. He wants you to think that right is wrong and wrong is right. And so because of that, Paul gives us the first piece of armor in sermon number two. We talked about the belt of truth. This represents our holy character. This represents our moral conduct. And we said, if you're going to wear the belt of truth, you remember I asked you, are you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? It is our integrity that establish our ministry. Then in sermon number three, in verse 14, the B part, we said, you must have on the breastplate of righteousness. This breastplate of righteousness protects our internal organs, our chest, our intestines. But the main thing, it protects our heart. And we said that where your heart is, that's where your treasures lie. The next sermon we preach, part four, we said we must analyze the soldier's feet. And so it says that we must have the gospel of peace. In order to stand, we got to have proper footing. And the preparation of the gospel of peace says we are eager to do the Father's will. And I told you, we have peace with God. We have peace of God. And we have peace from God. The peace of God, the peace from God, the peace in God, it gives us the prescription For right living, what is that? We got to have right praying. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We got to have the right motive. We got to have the right thinking, Philippians 4 and 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on thee. We have to think right. But in all of that, we have to live right. And then last week, we started this sermon on faith. He says that we need to have the shield of faith. And that was sermon number five this evening. We want to continue that sermon. Because when God speaks to the believers, he wants to confirm that we really believe who he is. So in verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 6, it says, above all, Meaning all the armor is important, but make sure you have on this armor because Satan loves to attack the believer. He loves to call us to doubt. He loves to make us be depressed or feel worried. But Paul says here, we have a defense called faith. And faith means taking God at his word and believing his promises. When we trust God and don't doubt, then Satan is left out. He says, above all, pay attention to this armor. Why does he say pay attention to this armor called faith? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you will not be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Without faith, You'll not be able to quench the fiery darts of Satan. 
And so on last week, I described this shield of faith being some three feet wide, some four feet high. And the soldier, if he wanted protection, he would just kneel behind the shield. And that's a word for somebody this evening. You find yourself being attacked. I need to tell you, just learn how to kneel behind the shield. Because the shield was to protect us. Look at the text with me real quick. It says, from the fiery dots of the wicked. I thought about sometimes we don't know what the fiery dots are, but Satan, he'll throw a dot and he'll lie on you. Satan will throw a dot and he'll mistreat you. Satan will throw a dot and he'll make you be disappointed. Jealousy is a dart. Sometimes Satan come at us and what the text said, it help us to quench or put out. Look at John 5 and 4 says, For whosoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomers have, even our faith. So we exercise our faith by putting our trust in the Lord. C.L. Lewis wrote, Faith is the art of holding on to things you reason once accepted despite your changing mood. Then Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so we tried to establish in our first message on faith that faith is not coming up with an idea that you think is good and hoping God will sign off on our idea. We have to understand that true faith is believing in the true source of God's word. And so last week we started off the message by using Abraham. And Abraham had a journey of faith. And we tried to give you the example that he passed the test of leaving home. But then he flunked the test of saying Sarah was his wife, that he, she was his sister. And just like Abraham, you and I have passed some faith tests, and we have failed some faith tests. But don't be discouraged because faith is developed over time. Because faith is developed over time, we have to understand that sometimes God requires us to move without all of the facts. We want a GPS, we want a road map, but oftentimes God reveals a promise, but he conceals the difficulties of our journey. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes God reveals our, our situation, but he conceals some difficulties in getting to our destination. And so, my brothers and sisters, faith requires us to act in order to simply let God act. And we must learn how to obey even when we don't have all of the facts. And when we do that, God will increase our faith. So it says here, if we're going to have faith, we got to be willing to believe God even in unfamiliar situations. That's what Hebrews 11 they said by faith. Abraham, when he was called into a place which he should receive an inheritance, obeyed and went. I know Abraham had his own faith, but I had my own faith journey. In 1996, I was given the opportunity to be promoted and moved to a place called Plano, Texas. And even though I had no idea what Plano was, I had to step out on faith and do what God had opened the door. And here I stand in 2020 tell you that when God opened the door, I'm so glad he provides a way for us to walk through. And, and my prayer was when I took the job, Lord, open the door so wide I can't help but walk through. Or close it so tight I can't force it open. And here I am today in 2020 saying I hadn't always been faithful to God. 
but he's always been faithful to me. So, well, let me lay down a few lessons of faith. First of all, faith says it does not mean the absence of fear. Let me say that again. Faith does not mean the absence of fear. And fear is described as false evidence appearing real. But the reality of it, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. So even though we have fear, we have to let our faith overtake our fear. But faith is also willing to sacrifice. Faith also means we must be patient. Faith also says we have to learn how to lean on the Lord even when we don't understand. So what am I going to do in my next 10 minutes? For those of you taking notes, let me give you about three points and get out of here. The first thing I want to lay down tonight, number one, everyone has faith. Tell your neighbor, everyone has faith. Everyone has faith. If you're sitting here listening to me tonight and you're sitting down, that's a true indication that you had a measure of faith because you did not test out the sea. You did not test out the couch. You just sat down anyway. And so Romans 12 and 3 says, God has given to every man a measure of faith, but our faith can be tested. Our faith can be strengthened. And because of that, if we want to have real faith, that means that every now and then to develop our faith, God allow us to have more weight. If you want to have a little faith, all you need is a little weight. But every now and then, you need your faith to be developed. In order to develop your faith, you sometimes have to get a greater weight in order to develop your faith. If you want to be stronger, you got to have more weight. That's what God does through our situation. He develops our faith by allowing us to add some weight. Look what James 1 and 3 says. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. Well, this scripture really didn't mean so much to me. I know James say, let it have its perfect work, but I really didn't get it. But I'll be honest with you, I've gone through some development in my life. And it realized God was working on me. And I admit it to my wife, I admit it to my children. At one time, I was not the most patient person. But in 2008, my mother in Little Rock, Arkansas, was diagnosed with dementia. My wife and I went to get my mother in 2008. And even though I had been praying for, pra for, for patience, I really didn't understand how God answered prayer. Can I tell somebody tonight, be careful what you pray for? <laughs> because if you want more patience, God will give you patience. But he sometimes will put you in situations that will try your patience. So in 2008, we go get my mother from Little Rock, Arkansas, and bring her to Plano, Texas. My mother was diagnosed with dementia and taking care of my mother every day. I had been laid off and we would have folks coming in, but my wife and I were the main caretakers. And it developed my faith. The reality of it was when my children wanted to stop when we was traveling, I told them, you better hold it. When my wife wanted to stop, I said, you better hold it. But once I got my mother, it was a whole different matter. Anytime I wanted to go fast, she would move slow. Anytime I wanted to be on time, she would make sure I was late. Not on purpose, but she had dementia and she would forget. And I'm standing here on this day 
testifying that I'm much better now. My mother's dead and gone, but I know I'm a better father. I know I'm a better husband because taking care of my mother, I develop a patient. I develop a peace of mind. I develop a comfort to know that God will put in you what needs to be brought out of you. And so we all have faith. But number two, there are different levels of faith. The Bible is full of faith scriptures. Some 270 translation on the word faith. Matthew 8 and 28, Jesus speaks of a different level. Jesus' disciple wakes him that he had been asleep on the ship. And Jesus waked them and says to them, Why are ye so fearful? O ye of little faith. Jesus turned and rebuked the wind and the waves. Jesus did not come to condemn the world. However, on several occasions, he does make indictment of little faith. So we all have different levels of faith. One level is little faith. In Matthew 17 and 20, Jesus just come down from the mountain, and here comes a man to Jesus, and his son was a lunatic and sorely vexed. He says to Jesus, I brought my son to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus rebuked the devil out of the boy, and the devil departed out of him. But listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 17 and 20. He answered his disciples and said, Oh, faithless and perilous generation, how long should I be with you? How long shall you suffer? So not only do we have little faith, we have faithlessness. Matthew 15, 28 also records a Canaan woman cries out to Jesus, says, Have mercy on my daughter. She's grievously vexed. And disciples who the woman was not talking to tell Jesus to send her away. And Jesus answered the woman and says, O woman of great faith, let it be done unto you. So not only do we have little faith, not only do we have faithlessness, but we have great faith. And I thought that was good enough this evening, but then I received a spiritual amber alert. I had a spiritual amber alert this morning that said you need to talk about not just fear, not just faith, not just a little faith, not just great faith, but you got to talk about doubting faith. Well, what's doubting faith? Doubting faith is because of COVID-19, a coronavirus, because of loss of job, we sometimes doubt and don't want to believe. And so in John 20 and 29, Jesus says to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's my question tonight. In your faith walk, are you a believer? I know things are not normal. And I know we can't always see our way through. And because of finance and job situation, Folks are confused and want to throw in the towel. But I stop by here to tell you tonight that I've learned not to rely upon what I see. I'm learning to have my faith based on the Word of God. When I was growing up, they used to say, don't believe everything you hear and only half of what you see. But in today's technology, you can't even believe what you see or hear. They can Photoshop, they can make things out. And in our scripture this evening, Thomas, or doubting Thomas, he had a problem believing because he was not there when Jesus appeared. And so he says, unless I can see him with myself, unless I can put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas says, I'm from a show me state. And I got to see for myself but Jesus, eight days later, appears and said, Blessed are thou that does not see 
and yet believe. And so I need to tell you this afternoon on this Wednesday evening, learn how to put your trust in the Lord even though you can't see your way through. We must learn how to trust God even when we can't trace him. Anybody here want to trust God? You got to put your trust in God because I discovered when you put your trust in man, man will let you down. When you put your trust in your jobs, jobs got a way of leaving town and not inviting you to go. <laughs> Don't even put your trust in your good help because I discovered with good help, you still can have an accident and leave you in a bad way. I came by this evening to tell you to put your trust in God. So first of all, I said everyone have faith. Then secondly, I said there are different levels of faith. Let me give you number three and get out of here. Like most folks, I want smooth sailing. Like most folks, I want a good paying job or a good financing, good relationship. But I discovered that life is sometimes difficult. Job 14 and 1 said, man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So because of that, we have to have a faith that grows. That's my last point. You got to have a faith that grows. Well, how do you grow your faith? Well, if you want your faith to grow, then you must exercise it. Yeah, a, a gentleman was telling me about he had several cars, and one car he had not driven in a long time. And the car was a Mercedes Benz. But any time when he went to start the car, he had some problems because it had just sat there. And just like in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. We must exercise our faith. We must maintain our faith. We must lubricate our faith. And I know during the COVID-19 scenario, many gyms were closed. But the faith gym never closed. Yeah, we got to exercise our spiritual muscle. Well, Minister Vaughn, how do I grow my faith? Let me give you a few points and get out of here. First thing I see, if you want to grow your faith, you need preaching. Yeah, first thing is, if you're going to grow your faith, you need preaching. Well, why do you say that Romans 10 and 14 says, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Romans 10 and 17 say, Say, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So number one, to grow your faith, you ought to be up under somebody preaching. You ought to be upon somebody teaching. But number two, not only do you need preaching, you need problems. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, in order to grow your faith, you need problems. Yeah, I know you want smooth sailing. I know you want things to be good, but I've learned that God can use problems to get us to depend on him. One of my favorite songs is, I thank God for my mountains. I thank God for my valleys. And for all the trials he's brought me through. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. And what faith in his words can do. Somebody ought to say with me, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. That's what keeps me because I've discovered that God uses problems to work out a miracle. Don't you know that every miracle in the Bible started with a problem? His first miracle at Canaan started because they ran out of wine. Don't you know he took some bad situations and made it a miracle when they had 5,000 people in the desert after his preaching, he took two fish and five loaves of bread. So if you want to grow your faith, you ought to be up under some good teaching preaching. And secondly, there will be some problems in life. But the third thing, if you're going to grow your faith, you need people. What do you mean you need people? Jesus always sent his disciples out 
two by two. In other words, you ought to have somebody on earth that you can agree with. You need somebody that can agree with you. That's why I know we can't get together right now. He says, but say not the assembly of ourselves together because iron sharpen iron. And we ought to have somebody that can say what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting on. So we need preaching. We need problems. We need people. But the last thing here, we need a purpose. What do you mean we need a purpose? We need a purpose because no cross, no crown. Jesus gave purpose to his disciples. He says in Romans 28, Paul is preaching 8 and 28. He says, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. So we ought to have purpose and we ought to have perspective that God is more important than our problem. We ought to have preaching. We ought to have problems. We ought to have people. And as we enter into this stage of society where they are going back and easing the social distancing, can I remind you that you already have overcoming faith. What you need to succeed is already in you. God's abilities are greater than your extremity. God's power is greater than any extreme situation. What I want to encourage somebody on this Wednesday evening as I close my Bible is to remind you that all you need is a little faith. And a little faith in God can do the rest. Well, I'm closing this evening. Well, but the other day, my wife was kind enough to fix breakfast. And I told you in another message, my 14-year, my four-year-old granddaughter, Cadence, she's four years old, but she's hanging around grandmother and me. And my wife was kind enough to fix us breakfast. And uh, Cadence uh, got her breakfast before I did. She had biscuit and sausage. And I looked at my wife. I said, well, how'd she get her breakfast before me? Four-year-old Cadence says, Grandpa, you got to be patient. She said, this food is good too. Your food is on the way. My wife didn't say anything. I said, yeah, it's easy to say that, Caden. You already eaten your biscuit. My wife simply came over, put my plate in front of me. And on my plate, it was sock, it was biscuit, it was jelly, it was syrup, it was oatmeal, and it was juice. And Kata looked at me and said, I told you, you just got to be patient. And I'm out of hell this evening. What God has for me, it is for me. And the good news of the text is it took longer for my blessing because God had more for me. Good evening, Wednesday night. I'm out of here, y'all. But can I tell you, uh, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Yeah, you just got to have faith the size of a mustard seed and believe that God God will do just what he said. I'm out of here. But can I tell you, uh, God specializes in increasing our faith. Uh, God specializes in taking little that become much. Uh, all I'm trying to tell you uh, this evening, don't give up on God. Yeah. He never gave up on you. Uh, I don't know what you're going through. A job layoff, a furlough, a death. But I stand here as a witness to tell you that God will, oh, God will, oh, God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Imitation is being extended. You've heard the preach word on faith. While I'm singing, we ask you to consider the invitation. Not that you have to come to some physical church, and we hope you do, but we want to invite you in tonight that you confess with your mouth, Romans 10 says, 
and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Imitation is being extended while I sing. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now. Just now. He will save you. He will save you just now. One more thing. Only trust him. Have faith. Only trust him and believe. Only trust him just now. Just now. Only trust him. Only trust him just now. Amen. Amen. And amen.